All right, welcome back to AGUD's um, Civil War II. I'm Charles, and today we're going to be looking at uh, tutorial number four in our uh, tutorial basics series. And today's tutorial is going to be on um, army information. Um, so I'm continuing just following along in, in the tutorial. And um, what it says is basically uh, click on grant, and then it wants us to check out this this little box that's, that's popped up here um, in the Army of Cumberland. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, okay, so first of all, the top here is just um, there's a star which reflects that it's um, it's an army, um, and it has the title of, of the stack. And then you see this rating of six six four. Uh, those refer to the commanding generals, in this case, General Grant's stats. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what those numbers mean right now, but basically um, the bigger number is the better. And you're sort of your vanilla, your average general in the American Civil War in the game has 311. So 664 is quite, um, quite a bit, quite a bit, quite, quite, quite better. Um, the next thing is we have a, a an and a white envelope that is that is open, and then two two numbers, one of which is in parentheses. Now, um, when the envelope is open, what that means is this this stack, and specifically this leading general is activated. Um, an activated general, uh, for instance, can choose to take an offensive position and, and goes faster or takes the, the, the units faster um, as they're on the march. Now you might ask, okay, like what, what's the point of that? Um, historically in the American Civil War, it was very difficult for commanders, whether it be Lincoln or Jefferson Davis and, and then down chain of command to just tell a general, go do this and do it immediately at this speed and attack exactly at this time and and you know all these types of things in other words they couldn't always um get the general to to follow orders as as quickly or as as the uh, you know, the chain of command would like to, for them to have interpreted those those orders so the game creates um, a very key and really good situation where commanding officers you can read it here are activated or they're not activated and maybe it says deactivated I don't know now there are different ways you can you can change the rules um, there are different ways you can change the rules in the game but your the normal and that's unlike the the main menu options but the normal rule is basically um, if if your commander is activated he can do whatever he wants to do he can go there at a normal speed he can attack he can assault town or a fort, anything like that. Um, if the commander is not activated, the commander still can move, albeit it will be slower, and they cannot take, they cannot choose to take an offensive um, offensive position. Um, then you have two other numbers, 8 and 23. These are representing basically how much command is being used and the potential amount of command. Or another way of saying it is basically General Grant is able to command um, up to the 23 number level, and he's only using eight. So you can, he's using about a half about a half of his command. So or third, excuse me. So he could actually do he could take on um, triple to what he's still doing, and then anything beyond that, if there were additional forces in this in this army, um, the fighting power would be decreased. So the men would still increase, but proportionally, each additional man you added to the army would not have quite the same fighting power. Now, again, there's, a, there's some really specific reasons why that is. Basically, um, the command structure in the American Civil War is, is, is very important, um, and it starts off all the way down um, at the company level, and the game doesn't really represent that, but the game does actually start representing um, at the regimental level, and of course at the artillery battery level, and then goes up. Now, 
someone who's not a good commander is not able to um, lead, you know, 50,000 men. Someone who's a much better commander is much more likely able to lead 50,000 men well. It's just, it's sort of common historical sense. And so the game represents that in, in a way by assigning each um, element a command cost. So as I'm going through these, so, okay, that says that takes one, that takes one, that takes one, um, one, divisions take, um, divisions take four. Okay, so if we add these up, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, and then I'm just going to go back and say, oh, okay, great, so we've, um, we've used eight of the 23. Okay, all right, let's, let's kind of move on to the, um, to the, the a couple other points. Okay, so the next thing they, we have here is uh, um, general supply, basically food and water, and um, and ammunition. So right now we have 100% of our general supply um, capacity or food and water capacity. Now we're actually fine up to the point as long as we have 33 a turn. So even if we had 50%, we would still not have any sort of um, combat penalty for that. But once we had less than 33, um, our men would start to take attrition hits through being hungrier than normal and so forth. Um, and same thing with supply, like we're at 80% because we just used 20% of our supply that we had taken with us. But again, we're only using 39 per battle and we have 212. So 80%, that does not mean we have some sort of combat penalty. It just means we're not carrying the maximum amount of ammo and yet, we still have plenty ammo left for for battles. Um, there's two other numbers here that have to do with basically whether or not um, whether or not our force, other forces, can see us and what we can see. And this is this is automatically calculated in the game. And to be honest, I never pay too much um, too much attention to it because. If, if you see my other tutorials, I sort of just go with, with feelings. I don't really get caught up in those kinds of um, game numbers so much. Um, but basically what is happening here is there's a hide value. So it's we have a number one, which is, is quite low. Um, so it's it's likely that other forces in the area are going to be able to see us. And then we're able to um, we have a detection values of five for land and three against sea, which is quite high. So um, Basically, we can it allows us to see these forces. For um, you know, for example, my advice is I wouldn't get too caught up into the hide and detection values unless you're really trying to do something very specialized. Um, you know, I don't know, some sort of long distance cavalry uh, raid or something like that. Um, if you have a large force, it's likely that the other force, your opponent is going to be able to see you if they're if you're nearby, and it's likely you're going to be see, see them, especially if you have any sort of um, cavalry with you. Um, finally, this one is really important, the one below it, at least for me. This is um, our entrenchment level, and um, it's, a, it's, it's one, which means you know basically very little. Obviously, the battle ended, and they just started to dig in. Your forces automatically start to dig, it, dig in when they stop, and um, as the years progress in the game, and as American Civil War uh, armies and forces entrenched more, those numbers can become um, higher, um, all up to eight, for, instance, for example. And then um, lastly, uh, let me then go to the next one. It talks about basically, if it looks like if this is actually um, black with surrounded by white here it's white um but if it what it's talking about is i think if this is actually black then it means that you are in a region surrounded by enemy forces um and that um of course can be can be dangerous in other words it's saying like you can get um cut off by you know basically wouldn't be able to get supply to you, for example. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to see, it's like I can't create that example because we don't, we actually don't have that currently. Um, so, yeah, that's actually something I've never really, never really um, 
taken a whole lot of attention to, but um, this sort of description here, it talks about basically, um, it's basically telling us like mathematically uh, how, you know, how much control your, this, you know, this army is able to, um, is able to, is able to um, attain in an area, you know, for example. Um, so it's a big number, 128. Zone of control points generated by the enemy is zero. That's our new enemy forces here. Um, if that's something, you, you know, if listeners are really interested in, like, getting into the, these numbers, and, and especially on the detection, high values, and then the zone of control, um, yeah, let me know, and I'll try to do... Um, some additional research and try to really figure out the math behind what's going on. It. Um, otherwise, I pay a lot of attention to, of course, whether or not who the army and the army commander is, specifically the you know the stats. Uh, obviously, are affected by that. Um, command points is critical, and um, supply and entrenchment are all all critical. Um, okay, yeah. So this has been tutorial four. So uh, kind of a basic. Again, a bit of a basic overview of of uh, being able to read some, read the stats um, of a stack in our situation, Grant's Army of Cumberland. And um, all right, that's going to be it for this time. On the next tutorial, I think we're doing a lot of movements and kind of preparing for the last push. All right, see you next time.